Welcome, um, everybody, back to um, Siegel Talks here at the Martini Siegel Theater Center, the Graduate Center CUNY in uh, New York City. Uh, spring is arriving, and uh, but somehow uh, it looks like the gods are, are lost in the dark forests and caves and streets uh, and uh, of Manhattan. Uh, it's still a very, very grim outlook. Uh, the numbers uh, of people infected seem to be growing every day. The unknown numbers, uh, things are still closed, theaters, bars, restaurants, the number of people who we lost, the lives uh, are um, staggering. It's the epicenter in, on planet Earth right now in, in New York City. And uh, other towns have sports as their uh, center. Others also have uh, uh, the car manufacturing or other things. But New York City is a town of theater and culture. And so it has been hit extremely hard. Uh, we have five, six million people taking the subway every day, uh, 300,000 people coming out of that only one train station, the Penn Station, and going back in the evening. So everything that makes New York great that we talk and party and uh, <clears throat> care about our communities is now has turned against us. Um, and we have to see uh, how to deal with it. The world has come to a full stop. The brake has been hit in a car that was in full motion, perhaps overdrive with overheated wheels for a long time and uh, feeling uh, is there that things haven't been so good before but now they're in a terrible shape <clears throat> but it's a moment where we should think and reflect and also listen and listening to artists is a significant uh, thing to do over centuries one wishes uh, people in power would have listened to the voices of artists they are on the right side of justice, on the right side of social progress, most of the time, almost always, especially if you cook all the voices together. And um, again, we are in a time right now of crisis, uh, that it's a tragedy, it's tragic times, as Milo Rao said here in the right sense. And Richard Schechner added, it's also farcical because we have leaders that are, it's a farce, uh, what they uh, put out and suggest. We don't have the good kings. Well, the bad kings and um, <clears throat> we have heard voices really really from around the world from tunisia from uh, egypt uh, south korea uh, taiwan uh, germany italy um, so many many places india pakistan and it's going to go on um, with talks this week from romania and um, india again <clears throat> and uh, uh, and today we have uh, two representatives from hungary hungary is a significant and an important uh, country um, in, in the center of Europe, uh, in the East Europe, it has a great history of art artists who have contributed to, um, to, to, to world uh, art and culture, but also it's a country that has brought out engineers and uh, ideas. It's a quite a remarkable uh, for a very small place how much influence came out there, but the news as in Poland, uh, uh, we hear the political news um, um, or having people scratching their heads. Uh, we are devastated to hear of our colleagues, our artistic colleagues, their situation. Um, the uh, great help Hungary also got after joining the European Union seemed not to have had the effect. Everybody wishes that it's an open society, that's a society that embraces change, that is um, uh, valuing free uh, speech, uh, independent justices. And, um, and a system that uh, makes an open society great, which is called democracy, where everybody participates. And so we have now two workers uh, of the Hungarian theater here with us, Anna Lengel and Andrea Tompa, two people who really have deep, deep, deep roots in Hungarian theater, who have worked with the most significant artists and they're themselves are significant artists, dramaturgs, and, um, and, and part of uh, the intelligentsia of the people who, um, have made Hungarian theater, you know, Krikator um, theater and so, so many, so many others um, who, we, who we know um, and have made a great contribution. So now they are uh, in their homes and uh, maybe we start with Anna. Anna, how are you? Where are you and what time is it? In Budapest or <laughs> Pest or Buda? Hi, hi there. Um, uh, so uh, I'm fine. I'm, I'm uh, doing really well. I'm sitting in my home in my study and um, it's uh, five past uh, 6 p.m. here. Um, oh, oh okay. five past 6 p.m. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, and, um, and so um, 
Yeah. Uh, so I live uh, close to an island, actually, uh, Margaret Island on the Danube, uh, which uh, makes it possible for me to walk uh, uh, walk around the island every every day. So that's and the weather is just gorgeous. So so that's uh, one of the best things about mm -hmm. all this. So you're not in Budapest, the town. Uh, I am in Budapest. Uh, I am on the Pest on the side. Danube. Yeah, the Margaret the Island is is uh, the biggest island in in Budapest. It's on in the Danube between Budapest and Pest, and I'm mm -hmm. on the Pest side. So um, so it's one of the most popular uh, green spots, anyway, of the of the few in in this metropolis. And um, now they are closing it down on weekends to avoid uh, huge crowds like on the uh, West uh, Village Pier yesterday, which was really scary, all these photos with people packed with people. Anyway, uh, so, uh, but you can still, uh, but not until 9 uh, a.m. So you can still, mm. you know, walk around or jog around. Yeah, it's such a beautiful town. I've been there many, many it's times. A such a significant yeah. history also of theater, not only from yeah. starting from Ferenc Molnar and everybody, but uh, so what's going yeah. on? Well, what is, how is your personal situation? How are you doing as Anna? In well, this? well um, I'm, um, there are three things maybe uh, that I would like to mention in this uh, conversation today. I'm an independent theater maker. So I lead the only documentary theater in Hungary. I mean, there are several documentary shows, but I believe we are the only ones who devote our whole work to documentary work called, we are called Panodrama. And, uh, and that's an independent theater. And the independent theater is a, in a very tight spot uh, to begin with. And now with the coronavirus situation, it's gotten worse. So that's one of the issues I would like to touch upon. Um, then maybe myself or Andrea will see, we'll talk about this um, uh, empowerment law, which um, uh, where by the state uh, uh, or rather the government is uh, allowed to pass laws um, without parliament, which uh, which is now the case in many countries. The, what's unique about Hungary is that it's um, that there is no time limit set to this. So in every country, they, they said, well, for the next 30, 30 days or 60 or whatever. And here there is no uh, time limit on this whole thing. And they are abusing their power as uh, we all suspect, suspected they would. So that's another issue I think we should talk about. And my personal situation is such that I have um, metastatic cancer. I've had cancer for, for over three years now. And, um, and therefore, um, and I'm now at the moment not getting my chemotherapy. By the way, that's my choice. I could get it if I wanted to, but of course you have to uh, somehow consider what's a bigger threat, uh, going to a hospital every three weeks, and in this case, uh, actually checking into the hospital for three days for a continuous uh, chemo infusion and uh, exposing yourself to that uh, threat, or maybe saying, okay, let's, uh, um, let's wait for another two or three months uh, from the beginning and risk um, that the cancer is spreading more aggressively. Um, so, you know, there is no good solution in this, but with regards, I'm doing really, 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 really well subjectively, no pain or nothing like that. Objectively, it's um, less uh, great, but anyway, uh, but uh, with regards to that, I would really love to talk about the health care issues. Um, there are some really, really serious ones, which I, I would just, uh, I will talk about this later, but uh, the summary of this is that um, in, in an effort to, to have low numbers for coronavirus uh, related deaths, uh, the government um, uh, had some uh, measures taken, which uh, however um, would result in many more deaths um, in other, with other ailments. So if you have cancer, if you have a heart disease, if you have uh, a very high blood pressure or just got um, your leg amputated or whatever, and they are actually throwing out um, patients on the street uh, under the, um, you know, under this uh, effort to, to have many, many free beds in hospitals. So I will talk about this more because um, this, the whole idea of um, living and dying as a you know, indignity 
that is something that escapes them entirely and that they truly don't give a damn about. So I would really like to touch upon mm. that. Well, Anna, um, thank you uh, for letting us know. And I'm terribly sorry to hear about this. I was not aware of this. I think last time we saw each other in uh, Robert Wilson's Watermill Center or in Budapest when I came to the ITI uh, meeting. Um, so these are terrible choices you have to make uh, between uh, getting an infection and you are in a risk group because of a low immunity and the chemo. Um, it sounds like wartime. Uh, it sounds like a time that uh, um, um, is uh, asking us really to make choices and think deeply about, uh, about everything, our bodies, our minds, our friends, family, and life and art. Andrea, um, how, how, how is the mood? How is the uh, um, situation among theater artists in Hungary? Um, I think it's, um, I, th I think it's very, um, people feel very unsafe now for many reasons, of course, for personal reasons, but um, what is going on in Hungary since, um, let's say, 2010, since we had the first uh, Orban government, uh, and it's a continuous um, uh, threat of uh, of the whole theater culture and the whole culture in general, because I'm a I, I, I am I'm a writer first of all, and a theater critic, uh, so I have both perspectives of the artist and of the critic, and I also see how large is this landscape of of um, I I wouldn't wouldn't call it censorship, but it's a a a uh, control over cultural uh, landscape from the side of the government. And I think that the big threat now is that this situation of the coronavirus might be very useful for the government to impose even more control, even more control over leaderships, budgets, institutional functioning, and all areas of the culture and um, and all the fields and institution might be even more um, uh, politicized in the way that the actual political uh, leadership will want to interfere even more with the cultural sphere. But this interference has been already very, very high and sometimes uh, very radical. Um, and of course, we can talk about uh, what happened in Hungary in the past 10 or even 30 years, but the, the, the current situation is, it can be used as a tool for reinforce this kind of political control uh, over everything. So this is, this is one thing. Um, and also always every such a crisis, a critical situation for many artists is in a way, let's say, useful to understand more about the world, more about personal issues, more about what human being is, and to have a, an even deeper understanding of, of our current lives. And I think um, uh, there is not very much uh, innovation in uh, the responses upon coronavirus from the side of the performing arts field, but there, uh, there is a lot of thinking going on. So there is not, we cannot really talk about important results or outputs yet, of course. It's, it, we are in the process and we don't know where this process goes, but um, there is a lot of thinking about uh, what, how, what is really theater and how will theater change due to this current very tragic situation as you mentioned in your introduction. And I really agree with the words of Milo Rao that we really can rediscover tragedy and the tragic right now because we experience it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, we often get here the New York news from the great Philip Arnaud, who did ring, ring alarm bells um, about uh, the situation of theater artists in Hungary, directors being removed from uh, important theaters, uh, festivals, 
not censor, but just completely the funding uh, taken away. Um, people who are not from the artistic field put in charge of, you know, cultural institutions, but they are members of the party. Um, in Corona times, has there been additional measures being taken that um, they would have even had a hard time to justify during the normal uh, uh, regimes days where they already more or less do what they want. They have such a high numbers by voters. But as you say, now with the empowerment law, has there something changed additionally on top of what we know? I only know about, uh, and maybe Anna will add uh, more details to it or other ideas, but I only know about one a uh, big project of the government, one big, uh, I, let's say, idea is not to give um, people money, but to give them work. And they open, try to open up um, a fund for getting um, work for artists and people around theater performing arts. Um, but this is very much in the hand of the government and uh, will be a, a kind of a grant or um, a big project uh, where the government representatives uh, and not independent uh, board members will decide upon who should get what as a support. So everything is given by the government is problematic because we, you don't really have a, uh, a independent um, decision-making process, you don't have transparency, you don't really have a democratic competition situations you can rely upon. So no matter the government opens what, that is very always very, very biased. And since there was <clears throat> recently, I think it last, the, in the second half of the last year, created a huge representative board of the so-called national institutions, but these national institutions are led by the so-called loyal people. And I think um, uh, here I should mention that what really our government expects people, people leading institutions and um, organizations uh, is to be loyal to them, to the government, to the Orban regime. And once you are loyal, you are you can uh, be um, you you can get support, or you can uh, get uh, um, uh, the support of the government or of the different funds. So this question of loyalty, I think, it's very important on the artistic field. Of course, uh, things became very complicated since last fall. We had local elections in Hungary and in very many cities, also in Budapest, the opposition won. So there is a new struggle on the whole. It's a new battlefield basically between the local governments led by um, opposition leaders um, uh, and the Orban regime. And this is very tricky now in the whole Corona situation. Anna. Uh, yeah, uh, so um, uh, well, uh, yes, I mean, it's, uh, it's a complex story. I don't know how much the viewers um, uh, are aware of um, this um, major um, protest that happened back in December. Well, uh, which not, was we yeah enough, yeah yeah which was unprecedented uh, which had been unprecedented for many years now so in fact um, um, the government tried to um, uh, sneak in uh, a law try to really pass the law what they re usually do is they uh, uh, they have a bill and then uh, they um, appear with the bill like at you know 8 uh, p.m and then they pass the law at midnight. That's their, their methodology. So that, uh, and there is absolutely no uh, discussion with the stakeholders. There is no, uh, um, uh, only their friends. So we don't know about these laws as well, uh, either in the, in the arts field uh, or in um, you know, uh, teaching or public education, or you can name any number of fields. They never discuss it with the stakeholders. 
Uh, but um, this uh, bill that they were proposing was uh, actually so outrageous that even some of their friends who were aware of it, they leaked it to the press. So um, very early December, in the first days of uh, December, we became aware of this uh, bill that they wanted to uh, make into uh, law, uh, which what had- What did the bill, yeah, what did it say? Exactly, was... he, three, three major points with regards to theaters. Uh, first, that the funding, the annual funding of the independent performing arts field would be seized altogether. Now, of course, uh, we must uh, um, uh, uh, emphasize that we are still in a much better situation than independent performing arts, uh, artists in the US. Because we know, of course, that uh, the US budget, there is only, you know, two cents out of your paycheck, which go towards uh, uh, the arts and it's being attacked by, uh, attacked by Republicans as a rule. So um, uh, the NEA is always the first target among the first uh, targets of uh, uh, Republican talk or Tea Party talk, definitely. But uh, so we are in a much better situation still. But we have this European tradition uh, whereby uh, taxpayers' monies, which by the way are never called that, they are always called the money of the state money, which of course the state doesn't have money, so, so that's another element which is totally twisted. Anyway, um, so um, traditionally artists uh, do get um, funds uh, from the state. Um, and uh, the performing arts, the law, the first performing arts law, which was passed in uh, 2008, after a um, more than two year discussion with the stakeholders. It was a very thorough discussion and the law wasn't perfect, of course, but uh, it was the first one of its kind. And it guaranteed that at least 10% uh, of all municipal funding goes to the independent scene, which is um, a very important scene in Hungary. So eight to nine out of 10 international invitations to major festivals go to the independent uh, scene rather than state or st city theaters. Uh, so this was a guarantee that would have established, uh, um, uh, would have made it possible for the independent scene to have a more stable funding and a more, more uh, stable uh, future. But as soon as the, the Orban um, government came into power in 2010, and especially Attila Vinyansky, now director of the National Theater, uh, who, is, uh, who decides about life and death in the theater field, they discontinued, they changed this law. So there is no, there are no guarantees anymore. And in this past December, they were proposing that actually the the structural funding, the annual structural funding for the independent performing arts scene, which is little, but uh, still uh, very important, would be discontinued altogether, that they would um, discontinue the National um, Cultural Fund, which is the most important project, um, uh, that the project but you can apply there for project monies, so not, not for the whole, um, um, not for your annual, uh, uh, whatever sub subsistence money, but for individual projects, which, and which has um, nine billion, a budget of nine billion uh, forints, uh, which, if I am not uh, terribly mistaken, is uh, around uh, like two hundred and seventy uh, million um, U.S. dollars. Uh, and they wanted to discontinue that and replace it with this. Uh, what Andrea already mentioned, this. Um, uh, body of the national institution heads who are all uh, Fidesz loyal or government loyal uh, people, uh, most of them puppets and not individual artists or thinkers. And then the third one was, which you, Frank, uh, mentioned at the end, at the beginning, sorry, uh, that, um, that they uh, said that any city theater who gets any funding from the state or from the ministry, uh, they're uh, the minister would have uh, veto the right to of veto, or would have uh, had would have an influence over who becomes uh, the director, the artistic director, or the managing director of that particular theater. And uh, we don't have a ministry of culture anymore since the Fidesz government. So actually, the minister is called the minister for human resources. He has an he's an oncologist. 
uh, and he is an idiot uh, as an oncologist too, but uh, he says, for instance, that 80% of um, fatal illnesses could be avoided if we kept the 10, ten commandments. That's what he says a as a professor Shocking. of oncology. Shocking. Yeah, that's just one of his favorite, you know. Before, uh, before this minister of culture, we had a priest, a uh, Lutheran priest. Yeah, but not, uh, again, not Minister of Culture, but Minister for Human Resources. So we only have a State Secretary uh, of Culture, but it's the Minister who would have uh, the right to veto. So it's actually, he doesn't know, he has no clue, the oncologist. So very clearly he'll, he'll do what he's told. Uh, so he, and they say, whoever gives the money says, uh, uh, decides, uh, is there, uh, is what they say. And uh, and of course, they don't realize that the money is given by the taxpayers. So their logic is we are giving you the money. So we'll say who, who is director and what programming you do. So the city where, as Andrea said, the opposition won and we have uh, finally a young, uh, very active mayor, the first time ever, the first ever who, you know, rides a bike to work and stuff like that. Um, uh, he made a deal uh, with the, the government um, whereby he protects five uh, city theaters. So actually they overtake I guess only five. four. No, it's Katona, uh, <clears throat> Radnoti, Örkén, Trafo, and uh, this, um, you know, this uh, festival of- The Bandel. festival, yeah, that's yeah. how it comes from. So, uh, Out of 12, yeah. Yeah. But the problem is that uh, I don't think this is this does uh, protect these uh, theaters, which are which they have labeled uh, for a long time as um, leftist robots, uh, yeah. theaters or liberal theaters. And now, thanks to a, a, a Me Too kind of scandal, they are also dubbing them uh, uh, the uh, abusive abusive theaters, which is mm. uh, outrageous, particularly one as well as the Academy of Theater and Film. And it's, uh, it's a scandal uh, that only touched upon one person who was right away uh, let go. So I mean, mm. every, everything was done the way it was supposed to do. It was supposed to be done or, or nearly. And uh, the director, uh, any mistakes he made, he uh, admitted to and he said he was sorry about, uh, you know, some delay that uh, happened earlier. But no one, there is absolutely no sign of these um, um, houses being abusive on a regular level. And of course, they um, they don't talk about the other scandals in the theaters that they prefer. Um, anyway, so these are all excuses to interfere with the programming and interfere with the funding. But um, even though these uh, theaters are now protected in a way, I think it's an incredibly dangerous precedent because uh, basically uh, now you have, uh, uh, they, are, they are trying to, it's very similar in fact to um, the US society. Hungarian society is very similar in the respect that it's incredibly polarized. It's become so polarized that, uh, that uh, 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 you know, it splits up families and, and, uh, and it's, it's hugely uh, problematic. Mm -hmm. So the situation. And then, um, so, so, yeah. sorry, just mm -hmm. to get back to the, I'm, 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 uh, I'm sorry, I'm explaining it so com in a, such a complicated way. But uh, what happened was uh, this was leaked, and uh, we managed to whip up an amazing protest. So we had a petition uh, within three days uh, signed by fifty thousand people, and it was a very. Uh, it wasn't even a petition. It was just on a petition site. It was very straightforward and very toughly uh, formulated. And we had a huge demonstration with at least uh, 13,000 uh, people and, uh, and all kinds of the most well-known actors all put up videos on Facebook protesting this. And so therefore they, um, they got uh, frightened. So this is also, this makes me optimistic in the way that there is a way, uh, they, are, they are cowards. So there is a way to protest against them. And I always say that we should do that. So they withdrew some of the, bill uh, but they kept this uh, thing about the city theaters which i just explained with the mayor but they uh, they still so the so the annual funding for the independent scene is still there and the national cultural fund funding is still there but it's important to know that as opposed to almost all countries and we heard how thomas uh, Ostermeyer said that they um, that theater people had to fulfill a form 
and or fill in a form uh, on a Saturday and on the Wednesday they had a check for 5000 euros in their uh, mailboxes and here there is absolutely nothing so uh, so the only kind of help you get and this is uh, news from yesterday in fact is uh, 1 billion uh, Hungarian forints that's um, 30 million US dollars going to all of the art fields uh, the whole art field but it's not decided upon by a uh, by a neutral um, set of curators or, or commission or whatever, where you could apply and where it could be transparent and uh, objective. And there is no uh, description on how the decision is going to be made, but the decision has been allocated to the national theater director, to the director of the literary museum and all of that, all these uh, government loyal people. And uh, they also left out uh, many professions. So for instance, no playwrights, no translators, no dramaturgs, none of the technical crew, uh, um, and men, almost none of the administrative crew. And, uh, and it's only their um, own um, subject matters mostly. I mean, you can, you can apply with individual, um, uh, lit, like, um, you know, uh, Quote, uh, poems, poetry that you will uh, you will do some poetry um, lectures or something like this, uh, and uh, and it's not um, it's and and it's uh, you have to promise that you will make a show, and uh, and the money you get is now uh, for that show. So actually, it's it's not uh, any kind of. Um, Systematic. actual social systematic social help but they always say that you shouldn't be given money uh, if you don't work so they what what this boils down to is that they basically don't understand the role of the state they don't understand that uh, the reason we pay taxes is among other things that would then where is an when there is an emergency situation then those monies or some of that money must come back to us and they must not expect anything in return because it will help us to survive. And it's a social kind of benefit and it's not uh, money for work. Yeah, yeah. so it's a, a disastrous uh, situation that already was disastrous. And now along party lines, I think the government is using the situation to starve <coughs> the theaters to already close down half of the Hungarian uh, theaters, the Budapest theaters, the city theaters. I'm glad to hear that the great Joseph Katona is still uh, somehow alive and kicking, but it's a declaration you know, of war from the government. It is clear yeah. theater artists have always been on the side uh, in a joyful way of uh, participation in the sorrows of life. And it has been the role of theater throughout thousands of years to point out what's wrong, what could be done better. Uh, we can work through uh, family problems or through uh, uh, questions that uh, are about uh, politics and power and uh, what justice mean and what law means, like Antigone, who says, I'm going to bury my brother, even the law is against it. There's a higher law and art is close to that. So I think it's a terrible sign for society. Any society where theater and the arts is blooming is a great society. It's alive. And if not, there are uh, big problems and they manifest themselves so fast, of course, in theater. Um, as uh, uh, Abhishek Mumba from India said, um, you know, people watch films and they could be critical. People don't care, but I do a show. I get censored by the government. So theater, of course, somehow speaks to us in a different way. It tells a truth that is uncomfortable as a model on stage that seems to be real and working. And it could be like this and also in life. And that is uh, stunning, the power um, um, of that. But um, to, question to both of you, um, how is the uh, mood on the street in Budapest? Do people wear masks? For how long have you been confined? Can everybody go out? Is anything open or what is closed? How, how is the situation in Budapest? Well, um, I live in a family, so um, I have a kid and uh, my kid hadn't been to the school in the past two months. So schools were closed almost two months now. Uh, Hungary, uh, Hungary closed uh, down quite early, which is, uh, well, I consider it quite early, uh, basically on the 12th or 13th of March. And uh, it was very funny to hear on a Friday morning on a briefing, our prime minister saying we were not closed the schools. And on that very Friday evening, he announced that school, schools will be closed. 
Yeah. Uh, so it's not very much of thinking and planning, of course. Um, so I live on the outskirts of Budapest on the north, also by the Danube. And uh, this is very quiet here. We live uh, in a house with a garden and that's uh, very privileged. And uh, now it's really a blessing. Uh, and my son was mentioning that we shall visit the center because we haven't been to the city and we, we were planning a, a tour in the city to see how, how is the center. People here wear masks, um, and, um, uh, t but it's very, very quiet. Theaters are also closed as everything else. Um, and uh, it's a little bit of punishment upon Budapest right now since uh, uh, some new um, um, directions given by the prime ministers, how the city, how the country should operate. And in the provinces, the laws, the, the uh, regulations are lighter. And uh, in Budapest, they are kept tougher. And uh, you can interpret also that is uh, a punishment upon Budapest, the liberal bad Budapest. So I, I also have an uh, understanding of this kind of punishment because I was reading that people in living in Budapest uh, stay much more at home and don't move very much around while people in the provinces, this is of course based on the cell phones um, um, data. Uh, so it's, um, it's, it's being really tricky. Most, mm. of, the, most of the shops um, are closed. For instance, no bookstores are open and um, uh, me being a writer and uh, uh, looking at what is going on in the liter literary life uh, this is uh, ha this will have a very big impact not on only, only on on the publishing houses, but also on book sales and um, and on um, on um, further lives of the writers too. Uh, and and it's very um, it's very tricky really to remind us all the time in this wonderful spring that we live in an era where this kind of tragic is not visible with our eyes in that in the real life so you have to read the news to have uh, an understanding about what is going on um, so um, I, th I think um, uh, what is also very tricky and I wanted to add something to the healthcare system um, uh, about which Anna has a much deeper understanding my ha my husband uh, works for um, uh, care home for the old, and he has never been tested. Hungary is not testing very much, and uh, it's very much criticized because of not testing really um, uh, a lot. And uh, uh, my husband lives, uh, and we all live in a, this very careful mood because uh, he is uh, working in this house with 90 old elderly people. Uh, and even if he would have like very mild symptoms, he could not be tested. He should go to be tested on private on his own cost because the government would not provide you with a test because you have even mild um, symptoms or you, you have a job which, um, uh, uh, which uh, is uh, putting you in this difficult situation. So... I don't think, um, and of course, uh, as with all the news coming from the government and this whole situation is being controlled completely by the government, um, it's very difficult to trust all these news. And uh, you see all the time that at these briefings, the opposition media, media's questions are not being answered. And, um, uh, these briefings that the official communication of the government is very much often based on propaganda and not on making the population to understand what is going on and what are the real data and what you mm -hmm. should be careful about. So trust is something I really lack in the situation. Yeah, so I'm sure that... Uh, uh ideological um, approach to a virus doesn't work to punish Budapest, but leave it open in the provinces. 
not taking care of institutions like old age homes, which have the highest infection rates, at least in New York Absolutely. City and in New Jersey, this will be shown that this is an incompetence and that there's something, you know, that is uh, really not helping the people, the governments. A big idea, of course, is that, it, as you say, prepare for these things, do good for the people, protect them, and to find the very best way to the society can thrive. Um, it's uh, it's disconcerting and makes me so sad to hear that from a country I've, I've been very often. I love Hungary. I love the Hungarian theater. You know, the famous Lubitsch filmmaker said who worked with Hungarian writers almost exclusively would say, you, even if you're a Hungarian writer, you still need to write a good third act. And um, and we have you have done such a contribution also through Kertes, the photography, painting, and the writing, Peter Nadas, and, and and so much. So to hear that a country that was uh, uh, under uh, Nazi and the Stalinistic uh, oppression that finally got out after the Berlin Wall opened, you know, is now experiencing such a dark, uh, a dark moment in where the arts especially are, which is so important in society are hit. What role does theater play in a normal life in Budapest? And what do you think will happen if this is over? When this is over? Will there be a change? So what is the, how significant is theater and performing arts for the people in Budapest? Um, let me first answer this. I think theater is very, very popular form of art in Hungary. It's still very popular. Um, Hungary is a country of almost 10 million people and the ticket sales is like almost 8 million tickets per year, which not, would not mean 8 million people because yeah, yeah. me growing, yeah like a hundred times to theater in a year, I am there with the number of 100, mm -hmm. but it's a very, very popular form of art. And it's, it was increasing very much in the past few years due to probably the fact that the prices of the tickets are kept low because we live in a culture very highly subsidized by the government. And uh, of course, a very big part of this uh, theater culture is a culture of entertainment. It's not like a very, uh, very deep, uh, very serious um, and not often not very critical kind of art form. But there is still a major part of the theater which is very valuable. Um, so on one hand, we, we are talking about a very popular form of art and uh, a very important form of gathering um, we have big theater houses in Budapest and around the provinces and um, to practice theater going it's very important still today from the school from the early years of of kids so uh, we have this rich culture on one hand uh, and on the other hand uh, this kind of political culture which would want to influence this theater scene politically very much and to put it under control. Um, maybe Anna should add something and then we go back to the question about the future. Yeah, well, um, I wanted to maybe add to the previous question about the healthcare system a little bit. Um, um, it's uh, Orban, uh, the Orban uh, government is very similar uh, to the US administration in as much as it's not experts who announce um, the findings or the new laws or whatever, whereas uh, Trump does it on his uh, Twitter feed, Orban does it on his personal Facebook uh, page. Um, and uh, and uh, well, he won't say we should drink uh, Clorox. I think that's you know that that's uh, even Orban wouldn't say that. Even yes. Orban wouldn't yes. say that. So that that uh, that's a keeper. Yeah. But it's not experts who are mm -hmm. um, offering their views. And in fact, hospitals are banned from answering questions of uh, journalists. So hmm. if a incredible. journalist goes to it's yeah. Incredible. So you can't really have, as uh, Andrea said, we don't have the facts. Uh, they don't, they are bragging every day that they have now, I think, um, I forget the number, but maybe uh, um, 1 million or 2 million tests, but they have only done like uh, 80,000 or something like this. Uh, so we don't know, we, we can follow that a lot of the protective gear and uh, masks and tests and all of that, of uh, all of which in the beginning were there were very few of, and even 
now there are not nearly enough, they send a lot of that to Hungarian minorities around uh, um, Hungary, so in uh, Transylvania, to Transylvania and Romania, for instance, but also to uh, Mol Moldova, and um, I, I don't even understand. So they are trying to buy uh, votes uh, with that, uh, clearly, because there is a very um, high sentimental value of, you know, helping minority Hungarians. That's a, that's a key um, element in their rhetoric, uh, which would be fine, of course, but, uh, or is fine, but uh, I mean, as long as we don't have nearly enough uh, tests and protective gear, that's a problem. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, the numbers in Hungary, maybe uh, your viewers don't know that either, are uh, are pretty good uh, as far as uh, as you know uh, deaths and uh, go. And uh, I I don't remember, but I think we are between two and three thousand now for ten million. That's not so bad at all. And I agree with Andrea that the schools and the theaters were closed down on time. I agree that was a good decision. Uh, but we don't know how many sick people there are. There are because there are hardly any yeah. uh, tests. And uh, and uh, over Easter, this is this is what happened. What I said would mention. I would mention uh, over the Easter uh, long weekend, uh, hospitals were ordered uh, to free up sixty percent of all hospital beds, uh, thirty six thousand thousand hospital beds for potential coronavirus um, uh, patients and anyone with, with, uh, with the facts, any uh, hospital management and other experts, they said there is no scenario uh, according to which these, this high number of beds would ever be needed for corona patients. So this is another, this is probably something that they wanted to do anyway. And now uh, with their full power, uh, with no uh, co control from parliament and under the, this excuse of coronavirus, they did something that they wanted to do anyway. So they sent a lot of patients home and uh, there is this, uh, for instance, a private nurse who offered her services uh, pro bono and she reported about the 10 uh, patients that she was taking care of. For sure, they were uh, terminal patients or in patients, not only, but patients in a very bad shape. But uh, within a week, nine of the 10 were dead. So we're talking about freshly amputated legs. We're talking about terminally ill cancer, cancer patients. We're talking about, um, you know, uh, people with, uh, uh, who sat in a psychiatry, on a psychiatry bed for 20 years and their families can't do anything with, uh, about them or people being sent home to uh, partners who are 80 years old like themselves and can clearly not feed them and not give them infusions and uh, and all of that. So, uh, and none of these deaths will figure in any of the uh, statistics, of course. So the, the rhetoric will be that we managed to get out of coronavirus, at least the first uh, wave with only so many uh, uh, deaths and no one will be able to report on the deaths that uh, these uh, uh, completely um, haphazard and completely unprof unprofessionally organized, the very uh, sudden uh, emptying of these uh, hospital beds led to. So that's really important to know. As far as um, uh, the street, I mean, the, the, um, there is a huge debate uh, about um, you know everything almost, but masks going out on the street. From day one, I I spoke out uh, pretty loudly, mostly on Facebook, but still uh, for uh, going out uh, because I think for your both for your physiological and your psychological health, I think it's key that you go out into the sunshine, that you move, that you that you walk around. And uh, the rules, thankfully, allowed for that, unlike in Spain or Italy. So at least uh, they followed Germany in that, that respect, that there was a, there was a separate line where, which said, it's okay to go out to, to do sports and to walk around as long as you only walk with the people who are living in the same household. So in that also, uh, even the Hungarian government, uh, I think was, um, was uh, doing well. And uh, so there is a lot of debate uh, but I think those people who go out and make sure that they move uh, around, uh, no matter what age or what condition they are in, 
according to their conditions, I think they are in a much better mental um, place because I think there is very little talk, at least in Hungary for now, and I haven't read a whole lot, some, but not nearly enough about the psychological factors of being locked up for months uh, at a time. So even in Spain, where we know uh, the virus hit hardest uh, in Europe, uh, they, for instance, children were not allowed to step out uh, the door for, I believe, six or seven weeks. I don't think that's right. I think that's very dangerous, small children and, uh, you know, school age children. So I think um, in that we have to be, you know, really there should be a differentiated uh, thinking and there should be a social discussion about that. Mm -hmm. As far as the role of theater, just very briefly, um, I, um, all of what Andrea said is of course uh, very right. I think that regardless of the government's overreach and all of this, I think Hungarian theater is in a crisis uh, artistically. The independent theater is and, and theater as a general as well. We are, um, we are not, um, we have lost our compass in a way. There are some outstanding shows and some, some very exciting projects, but not nearly as many as may, say 20 years ago or 15 years ago. So that's, that's another thing. But I think the most important issue, if I have to pick one issue in Hungary, I think it's education. So if I had a choice to take back one thing from this government, it would be public education because what they are doing to the future generations, that's the scariest part of all because, because now we have uh, but a, a small portion of university students, many, I mean, much fewer uh, university applications than uh, say five years ago. And this is what Orban wants. He doesn't want smart, educated people uh, around him. He doesn't want informed consent from people. He wants people to be uneducated, uninformed, so that he can tell them and they believe him and no one will contradict him. So I think the biggest danger, and I think theater can pay, play a key part in this with the theater in education projects and even proper theater shows, I think, educating the public in, in a way that's at the same time not didactic, I think that's one of our most important tasks these days. I mean, these are all um, shocking, shocking statements. So, you know, they had the disregard for life and the dignity of a human, of an elderly person that clear out 60% of beds to pretend you have uh, empty beds for something one didn't even know. And supposedly they are very little, it doesn't make any sense and it sounds more closer to a um, North Korea than it sounds to a member of the European Union. Um, it's absolutely sh uh, shocking and um, and I uh, really respect both of you for uh, for trying to make something work uh, in you know to find a way as a as an artist uh, to survive and to make a contribution. Do, do you think there will be new forms of theater coming out? What, what are Hungarian artists doing at the moment? Are they at home doing their stuff online? Are they writing plays? Or do you think it's a pause button? It will go back to already the crisis that was in theater? Or do you think this will be a different, a, a definitely a game changer? I don't think it would be really a game changer because uh, probably the big institutions would only want to continue as it was before and they want back their public as or as many people in the room as possible. I think one of the big issues will be that the public, uh, the audience will not really have the confidence uh, in theatre in going back to the dark room and sitting together like many hundreds, hundreds of people uh, and it will take a long time until all this big mass I was talking about earlier will go back. Um, lots of people I'm hearing that they are rehearsing on Skype and on um, online and doing um, research and probably for um, a small amount of um, uh, independent artists, the, this, um, this period uh, and the experience of this online world and this lockdown and this new tragic 
experience will um, will open um, probably a new uh, understanding of what is the role of theater and why 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 making theater what why should one make theater probably um, I don't think it will have in a short term uh, such an impact on literature because literature is very different it reacts more later and it's on a long run probably uh, but that but uh, uh, theater can uh, can react more quickly I think uh, now the question is of um, uh, the fall how the fall will reopen and if um, the the laws will allow theaters to open and in what way I mean maybe there is um, there I just talk, called one of the theaters to have like a kind of, kind of concrete understanding of their thoughts. I called the artistic director of Trafo, Bea Barda, and she said that they are talking about uh, putting like 50 or 100 people into the big hall and um, I don't know, every third um, seat to be taken, people wearing masks. And can you really manage that or how can you function under such mm -hmm. conditions? Um, or uh, one of the big questions will be after this long uh, uh, lockdown that all artists are very willing immediately to work because they are very keen on, on working and um, how can you really organize a new life of artists working together and uh, creating shows they were postponed of, uh, I mean, for an artist, many, many shows were postponed. Um, so I don't think we'll, it's, it's, we don't live, I agree with Anna that we live in a, in a um, period of crisis, a Hungarian theater is clearly in crisis everywhere on all levels. So in, in th this situation will not be a, a, a really changer of the, of the understanding of the role of theater. So as she said, we lost the compass um, the, the role of the theater is not very clear, except for the role of entertaining, and that's not what we or me would like to see. Yeah, this is um, um, stunning. Um, you know, you barely can even talk about the, the overwhelming problems you are having here due to communicate it to us in that short time already took over. So how does one even think about uh, making art? I guess also for you guys, it's a time of um, uh, rethinking of kind of an inner immigration and uh, a protest. Um, is, uh, are your European theater colleagues, are they helping you? Are they supporting Hungarian theater? Are they writing letters? Um, are they writing? Uh, are they, how, how, is, how is the situation? Well, um, one of the problems that many have addressed uh, before is that the European Union has failed uh, in the face of the coronavirus in the sense that everyone is uh, thinking of uh, saving their, you know, closing down borders between countries uh, saving their own country uh, and hardly very there is very lift, little effort compared to all those individual national effort efforts uh, to uh, you know changing uh, or helping the EU as such so the European Union in uh, failed this test test in a big way uh, at the same time there will be a charity event in a few days uh, maybe on the seventh I'm not entirely sure and they are trying to raise uh, 7 billion um, euros. Uh, or, or, um, uh, it will be an online auction event uh, or not auction, but charity kind of mm -hmm. event. You, we, uh, your viewers must uh, understand that um, um, individual charity and, uh, uh, and um, you know, all kinds of um, 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 that kind of, you know, the, 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 the thought of, uh, if I'm doing well, if I'm making a lot of money, if I am lucky and I'm making a lot of money also because I'm good, then I need to uh, give back. This, this thought is not nearly, not nearly as rooted in Europe as in the US. So philanthropy in, in the size mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, George Soros and 
and of course many others uh, is not not as well known in Europe mm -hmm. as not nearly as well known. Yeah. Um, so I think we need to. Um, I I'm afraid Andrea might be right, um, but I really uh, applaud uh, anyone. For instance, the director of uh, Urkin Theater, Pa Machoi, who gave an interview and he said he must um, rethink the whole coming season, the whole programming, because what uh, he was programming before isn't valid anymore because now he needs to have shows, each and every show uh, with as many of the uh, actors from the permanent company. We have a repertory system with permanent companies obviously and not an ensuite uh, system like uh, the US or most English speaking countries. Uh, so that it's key that he gives all of them work in almost all of the productions. And this is not only to so that they can make money but also so that they can um, that feel valuable again, so that they can have the feeling that they are doing uh, their job and what's in most cases more than a job, a, a true calling uh, of mm -hmm. sorts. What is needed now? What would you both say this would help the Hungarian in, in theater? I mean, we the Siegel Center once tried to make a little contribution in the new theater, the new skin has, I think. Uh, leadership was forced to exchange. We did a book and they talked about, they didn't want to have riffraff plays from New York anymore. So we published a book of New York plays in Hungarian uh, uh, translation. We called them riffraff plays from New York, but obviously it didn't help uh, to do have an impact. What, what needs to be done? What do you feel it would revive the scene from with Orban without or with the new mayor you have? What would be needed to think this would be a new start and this could be something? It's very difficult to say. Uh, um, there was a few weeks ago, there was a fundraising um, uh, uh, situation of the uh, independent performing arts organization trying to help the independent artists. Um, of, of course, um, uh, like funding is always very important and um, independent grants are very important probably also international corporations, but all these international corporations will have a very different future from now on uh, with much less exchange, physical exchange probably. Uh, I think visibility is very helpful for all those artists who uh, feel somehow not only locked down, but also they don't, um, uh, their voices can, cannot be heard. And I think they're like very important artists and um, artistic directors from Hungary um, uh, who could be introduced uh, to the uh, kind of international scene. Um, so these are my thoughts for, for your questions. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, that kind of uh, funding, um, we are still trying to raise money. The Independent Performing Arts Association is still trying to raise my, uh, funding for the independent artists who are uh, almost, uh, or, or rather, I'm sorry to be exact, not the artists, because most of the other funding only thinks of the actors and none of the other participants of the theater work like uh, creative people or technical or administrative people. Uh, so I can send you the link where we're trying to raise uh, more money. And if you can put it on your website, that'd be great, obviously. Mm -hmm, sure. Other than that, um, um, institutional funding, there is no institutional funding, so that means that any kind of the very, very limited uh, uh, sources are only available to individuals. So as a, an independent performing, um, um, as an independent theater, uh, sorry, that was me, uh, turned off, uh, as an independent theater, I cannot apply for extra funding. So if, uh, you know, if you think you can hook me up with someone who would help with that and, and possibly there would be um, uh, Americans who would, would like to help us with that, that'd be also great. Um, but since you mentioned the publication, I think a similar effort uh, might be helpful, maybe not necessarily plays, that too. But perhaps this time around, it could be, um, uh, you know, writings on about theater, Hungarian theater, but not only because uh, for some reason, which I fail to understand, there is very little uh, theater publication on theater or plays or whatever in Hungary. So we are one of the very few countries in Europe for sure, 
uh, uh, where not a single book on Robert Wilson has been published ever. Uh, or uh, our same, you know, like our own great theater makers, Tamás Osher or Gábor Zsámbéki, and I could go on and on, most of them, no one has ever written a book about. So if you think that uh, the Seagull Center might be interested in putting a, together a book about um, Hungarian theater or maybe independent theater, but maybe not only, whatever, we can talk about this. And if you had the funding for that, there would be a lot of people who could write really good, thorough um, articles and essays for that. There are a lot of mm -hmm. people who can do that in English, in fact. Yeah, so let's uh, let's talk about this. If you yeah. think this is helpful, this is a, a way to do. We had uh, uh, your colleagues from Taiwan, which is an exceptional, uh, successful, like South Korea in fighting the crisis. Next to additional funding, they gave 140, 160 million uh, US dollars right away in the first weeks for artists. And they are collaborating um, is perhaps also a looking for more models of collaboration and their mission also is to find new ways of theater. So maybe there's a way, you know, to connect with them and combine a Hungarian artists um, 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 with them. But I think also Europe has to step up European uh, idea, which is founded on the idea of enlightenment, uh, which is founded, you know, the great story of Troy, which we all share and, uh, and our gods of theater and, uh, and, uh, and the, uh, in the, the the history and I think uh, Hungary has to be reminded that this really is part of this is part of the history and I think it's an important uh, 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 moment also next to uh, paying attention to what happens with the coronavirus but also what happens to our colleagues and friends um, in in Hungary. So thank you really uh, for sharing. I'm sorry that these news are so gloomy um as the, as the famous uh, uh billy holiday song of the gloomy sunday you know the <laughs> hungarian suicide songs uh, you know the, the mood doesn't seem to be good and uh, i hope that this beautiful city the little paris at least and um, will 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 come back on its feet maybe it's time to connect to the young mayor in budapest they make sure that existing theaters the ones who maybe didn't get funding connect with free companies that you find new models of uh of collaboration coming um, out of this and uh, and use that time. But I hope you will find a bit of time for yourself and uh, to take care of you, to stay safe. This is important. And uh, not to feel the pressure that you have to do something. It was all our artists say, you know, it's okay not to be productive. It's okay to be overwhelmed. It's okay not to have the answers, but to think and to prepare for when this is over. As for many artists who said the real fight uh, will start, whether it's uh, Hong Kong or Egypt, uh, whether it's Tunisia um, or, or, or other countries. In Chile, we had Guillermo Calderon who wrote about the devastating situation also after the December um, uprising. So um, there's something that unites us. Uh, this virus is perhaps the first thing that really, really makes everybody so close, yet we are so far away. And our world has become so small, our apartments, but the global world also is so close to us now. And um, we um, keep on doing um, um, our talks here and uh, Lula Arias will be with us uh, from uh, Argentina. We will have theater makers from uh, India. We will have uh, uh, Stacey Klein from the Double-Edged Theater. We will have um, uh, reports you know, from a circus, Theodoro in New York City and uh, family circus. So how is, the, how is that uh, uh, working out for them? We're gonna have Michaela Tragan and, and her, uh, her friend, or who she's a Roma actress in Romania. You know, how does that all work out? Um, everybody experiences this uh, lockdown in a different way, and we need to hear hear that. And uh, a little bit over time, but very fast. Is there anything what you would say to a young Hungarian or Eastern European, European the, the artists, students? Like, what do you feel? What is of significance? What is important to keep in mind? I think uh, what you already mentioned that um, um, it is uh, it is fine not to work so much and it is fine to reflect more and to be in this situation and not looking at only of what we have lost and maybe um, how can we um, how can we we repeat the past and we get back what uh, what have been before, but to try to understand and accept this present situation and to go forward with the experience of this tragic moment 
which also like all the tragedies um, have its gains too. So not only the tears, but um, also there is a lot of, uh, maybe I would use the word grace in this time because we, there is a gain of these times too. I mean, it's a gain that we are so, such an intimate relationship with our, with the people we live together with and lots of other things we did not experience before or not with that intensity. And also um, to put our anger there where the anger should go. Uh, I mean that sometimes we put the anger not in the right direction to our partners or to, I don't know, to unknown people at the Facebook, but the anger should go there where it has its place. So to look at what is going on and to understand that who and who is responsible for lots of bad decisions and lots of bad situations created and the anger should go there. So I think that tears are okay and I accept tears and all tragedies will have tears to share, uh, to be grateful for some things and to be angry, it's fine, but to put this anger there where the source is coming from. Thank you. Well, I can, I can pick up on that because uh, I agree with all that Andrea said, obviously, but also um, that in the end, we have to realize that the responsibility is ours also at the end of the day, because um, there are no Soviet uh, tanks on the streets. Uh, there is no foreign army occupying Hungary. We voted these guys uh, into power. So in the end, I think it's important to realize our own responsibilities. And it's uh, key that we have to stand up uh, for ourselves and for our rights. So the hospital uh, directors who refused to fulfill um, this uh, very inhumane and very uh, unprofessional uh, murderous uh, uh, measurement of uh, freeing all those beds, two hospital directors were fired over this. But if all hospital directors had refused to do it, then obviously all of them could not have been fired. So this is a similar, similar situation as, as with teachers before or theater directors. So we need to, for young people, my most important message would be that um, in these times, I think it's, um, it's a perfect occasion to realize your own responsibility as well as your own rights to be, become very much more aware of these uh, and also um, to build a community. And uh, there have been, we've been complaining a lot uh, uh, this afternoon, um, but there have been wonderful uh, community efforts um, that we have seen. And that uh, even though we might complain about the situation of the theaters, um, this is nothing uh, compared to what the Roma families in small, villages have to live through because of course their kids in this single room five kids they don't have tablets they don't have the internet so their entire education simply stopped on the 11th of march or the 13th of march and uh, and we don't know how it will go on or when it will go on so there are always people much uh, more uh, uh, exposed uh, to these uh, situations than we are um, so it's important to be aware of that and to, to build these communities, to be aware of your own responsibilities and also to finish on an optimistic note, even though this healthcare system was on the verge of collapse far before uh, the coronavirus um, scan, um, crisis hit. Uh, and I have been in the middle of this healthcare system for three years now, over three years. And 90% uh, of my experience has been wonderful. So there are so many great health workers, doctors, nurses, technical crews, uh, whatever. So within these uh, un impossible, among these um, um, impossible circumstances, there, there is so much uh, you know, devotion to really doing a great job to, to helping people, saving people. Um, 
and and that is uh, something that we must notice we must remain i think we despite everything we must uh, see the glasses half full rather than half mm -hmm. empty great great and we look forward to see what the great workers of the hungarian theater will do to help this society get back on its feet to heal the wounds and to hopefully put together what always has been together and what needs to be together. Thank you all. And I hope you all will be able to uh, tune in tomorrow for the great Lula Arias from Argentina and uh, to hear from her what um, the situation is in, in Buenos Aires and what she and her colleagues are thinking, uh, how they give meaning to the situation we are in and uh, what they have in mind for, for their own work, whether it's changing them or not. Thank you both, Andrea and Anna. And uh, it's in overwhelming uh, to you. hear all the things you have to deal with. And uh, so I hope uh, we will uh, come back. Thank you. And uh, thanks to our listeners for taking the time to listen in. These are tough talks, but they are serious and they are honest. And, um, and I hope you also help you to get through these days of these unprecedented times and when no one really knows what is good and bad, what will happen or what will not happen. So we are in the same boat and we, we, but it's important to hear voices like from Anna and Andrea. Thank you so much and have a great Thank evening. Bye-bye. 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 Thanks to HowlRound for hosting us again from Emerson College and to the Siegel team and uh, all my best.